Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. And for this video, we're gonna be cooking up the rabbit that you saw butchered up in that previous video. Now, there are many different types of recipes out there that you can use for rabbit. One of the most popular being a rabbit stew. Um, my wife and I, we've made rabbit stew quite a few times now. So we're trying to explore some different recipes so that way you don't keep eating the same thing over and over again. So today we're gonna to be doing bacon wrapped rabbit. And um, with this bacon wrapped rabbit, I'm gonna be roasting in the oven so that way I can keep everything all inside today. But if you want, you can also wrap it up in bacon and throw it on the barbecue and grill it. Um, so we've got our rabbit here. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our rabbit out of the bag and we're just gonna rinse it off, make sure it's all clean from that butchering process. And once that's done, then I'll start uh, prepping it to get wrapped with bacon. All right, let's get a rabbit out of the meat out of the bag here. We got uh, two kidneys, a heart, um, and I'm actually going to cook up the liver from the two rabbits there. Oh, we can eat them both tonight in the same meal. And here's the rest of it. So basically, um, if you take a look at this rabbit here, it does look pretty clean, but I have noticed there's just a tiny little bit of hairs here down near the bottom. So just give it a quick rinse, make sure you use cold water and just rinse off all your meat. Uh, this is the last, just like with the porcupine, this is the last step before you start eating. So you want to make sure that your meat does not have any more hairs on it. Otherwise it's going to end up in your meal. Thankfully, these animals aren't too hard to clean. So should have no problem making sure you need to clean. So just gonna repeat this process for all the steps of the of the rabbit. Okay, so now we got all the meat here all on our cutting board. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, take the liver out of the way. I'm actually gonna cook this separately and not wrap it in bacon. I got a different recipe that I do for the uh, for the liver, which is really quite tasty. So I'm just gonna put that to the side here and uh, use those in a minute. Now, as for getting this all wrapped up in uh, bacon, um, what's gonna happen is I'm gonna be trying to make sure that all the meat is approximately the same size. After all, if you have different size meats, then they're gonna cook differently. So the way I see it is these two tenderloins and the two front legs are almost the same size, except these back legs are a lot bigger. So what I'm gonna do just to make sure that these all cook pretty well evenly and throughout the same process. I'm actually going to be cutting um, just this bottom section of meat here off the bone. So that way um, this back leg becomes about the same size. So to, just to do that pretty simple process, just cut right, you can actually see right there. What I'm going to do, there's a little bit of like a crease in there. You're just going to cut right along there and across and that will, uh, Cut the meat off the bone there. So cut down to the bone. There we go. Just gonna work my way across. There we go. Looks like there's still a little bit on there and this one I'm just gonna open it up here a little bit. So there you go. So I got a little bit of meat there off. And now this back leg is a little bit smaller and should cook a little bit uh, quicker without that meat. So I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. Plus it, it just adds a bit more boneless meat, which is nice. Actually, I did a better job on this one than I did on the other one. <laughs> so there you go. So we got the, uh, the meat off there and now I can wrap these pieces in bacon and we can get that now as for the organ meat and our tiny little tenderloins, um, what I'm gonna be doing with these is I'm just gonna cut them all in half. So I'm gonna cut this kidney in half. There's one kidney. Two kidneys. And same thing for the heart, I'm gonna cut this in half. Perfect. Okay, so now I got all the organ meat here cut in half and I got these little uh, tenderloins. What I'm going to be doing is kind of putting them on a bit of a skewer and kind of just doing like 
meat bacon, meat bacon, meat bacon, and kind of make like a little bit of a organ meat skewer. And then the rest of this stuff will cook uh, wrapped in bacon. Okay, so now, um, the thing about rabbit that you want to think about um, and keep in mind is that it is a bit on the, uh, or it can be a bit on the tougher side. And one of the reasons why is because this meat is just so lean. So to help make sure that you can get the meat just a little bit more tender, um, you have to use some fat and some salt. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap up my wrap it with some bacon. So you don't need to add too much salt, but I'm going to season it here just a just a touch of salt because you're going to get a lot of it from the bacon. So you really don't need too much um, salt. And I'm going to add some pepper as well. Making sure we get the meat nice and seasoned here. Okay, you don't need too much. I think that should be should be good. Have some pepper. Perfect. All right, now we can start wrapping it up with some bacon. Just grab a strand of bacon here. Just wrap that around. So, hopefully, this will be the first time I've tried this recipe here, but hopefully it makes the meat nice and uh, tender with this extra bacon fat and salt from the bacon too. Because without that extra bit of salt, the meat can get pretty tough. Just finish wrapping it up. There we go. Place on the baking sheet. Let's keep her going our process. So basically just gonna repeat the process with the rest of the uh, rest of the pieces here. And then I'll see you guys when this is all done. Okay, so there we have all of our meat here, all wrapped up in bacon. So the only thing, the only step left now to do is to put our meat here on this little skewer using some bacon. So again, I'm probably just gonna do just organ meat and then put some bacon here. There we go. Yeah, organ meat, bacon. Make a little kebab. Here you go. Nice little kebab made. Put that up on the baking sheet and there we go. So we have all of our rabbit here. So uh, basically what's gonna happen is we're gonna put this rabbit here into the oven. We're gonna do uh, 425 degrees and we're gonna do that for about uh, 10 or 15 minutes. Okay, now as for the liver, what I'm going to do is we're actually going to make what's called the, I like to call them fried liver bites. So basically it's just uh, small little chunks of liver and we uh, fry them up into these little bite sized pieces, almost like a, uh, kind of similar to that of a, uh, what's the best way to compare it? Almost like a chicken nugget, I guess, in a way, like a little fried piece of meat. So I've just mixed a little bit of cornstarch with a little bit of flour. Now for seasonings, just a little bit of salt, pepper. Bit of paprika. Some garlic powder. And a little bit of uh, Cajun spice here. Ah, geez, at least. There we go. Oh, there's the English side. There you go. Cajun seasoning. Let's bring this one in there. This is going to be our dredge for the liver bites. And we need some eggs as our binding agent. Okay. Whisk those up together. And make our dredge. So the thing that you haven't seen off screen is the liver itself. So what you want to do with your liver, just like the rest of the meat, 
just rinse it off and then uh, cut it up into uh, bite-sized pieces. Okay, so on the stove here, in this little pan here, I just heated up some uh, canola oil. So that way we can uh, basically deep fry our liver bites. So here, we got all our little pieces of liver. So we're just gonna dump them in the flour mixture first. Then in the eggs, and back into the flour. Now, the one step that I did miss this time, which I did do previously, was letting them soak in some milk. So I mean, like you can always do that um, if you like. Um, I know that that's generally speaking, it helps to get the metallic flavor out of the liver, but I've noticed that because of how delicate and small the rabbit is, the liver doesn't really have that strong uh, metallic -y taste. So it's really not that big of a deal if you miss the milk step. So just got them all dredged up here, throwing them in the eggs. Okay. These are gonna serve as a bit of a, pretty much like an appetizer, the main course tonight. Here's all the pieces. Okay, just gonna mix these all around. Make sure they all get evenly coated with the eggs. Take a look at those bad boys, all ready to go into the fryer. Now as for dipping sauce, what we're going to do is we're going to create a bit of a chipotle mayo. So I just got some mayonnaise here, um, some chipotle sauce, Cajun spice, and then uh, some smoked paprika. So that's why I put the Cajun spice into the dredge mixture for the liver, is just to try to have a spice that was both in the dip as well as um, on the meat. So there's a few scoops of mayo, add some dashes of the chipotle, add in our Cajun spice, and then as for the smoked paprika, just need a little bit of extra. This lid on this thing is a uh, pain in the butt to get off sometimes. There you go, a little smoked paprika. There you go. Mix it all together. And we got ourselves the dipping sauce for our liver bites. And I can tell you that smells so yummy. And it tastes just as good. So there we go. So we got a little bit of chipotle mayo for our liver bites. Okay, oil's up to temperature, so now we're gonna drop in our liver bites. Drop them all in that hot oil. All right, so our appetizer's done. So this is how they turned out. So you got, uh, see they're all nice and golden brown. And uh, right now the rabbit's still cooking in the oven, so may as well dive into our appetizers, eh? And uh, a little bit of dip. It's really quite good. One of the things that I like most about the rabbit liver is it doesn't have that strong of a rabbit, or not rabbit, I should say, but not that strong of a liver taste. hot and the meat the liver meat is just so tender that these bites literally just melt in your mouth so for anybody out there that's not a huge fan of liver I recommend that you give these a try because uh, you'd be pleasantly surprised in fact my three-year-old he eats these up all the time
our oven's been cooking for about uh, close to close to 10 minutes now. Well, here's what it's looking like so far. So just gonna give these a little bit of a flip. And then uh, looking at the meat here, looks like it still needs to roast a little bit longer. So I'm gonna give this another, probably another uh, 10 minutes or so. The internal cooking temp for rabbits is 160. So you can always use a little probe to assess the temperature. Okay, so we got our oven all flipped here. We're gonna pop it back in the oven and check on it another uh, 10 minutes. Okay, everyone. So our rabbit's been cooking in the oven now for uh, 10 minutes aside. So we just time to go ahead and take a look. Look at that. Looks pretty tasty. Little temp there. Oh, it's kind of backwards there. 162 we're showing. So we're all good to go now. Okay. So I'll make sure it's all good to go. I'm gonna get myself a nice tenderloin piece. Just a bit of the back leg. And of course, our little skewer, which I'll now take the meat off. There we go. And to make this a complete meal, I myself some mashed potatoes. Can never go wrong with mashed potatoes. And I also got myself some broccoli here as well. There you go. Nice little bacon wrapped rabbit with some mashed potatoes and broccoli. All right, let's give this a bit of a taste, shall we? Rabbit is completely cooked here inside. Big little piece of bacon on it. Nice tenderloin. That is Damn good. This back strap is not chewy at all. Alright, so we got a little, little bit of heart with the bacon. Still tasty. Bites a little bit on the chewy side, but it's uh, definitely more tender when you cook it. In with the stew and there's a little bit of kidney meat geez the kidneys I tell ya just like the liver it just melts melts in your mouth so tasty there so you guys can sort of see a bit of a zinged up picture there there's a little back strap And it's still juicy, which is nice. I think the bacon was definitely a very good option to go with the rabbit. So there you guys have it. And there's some bacon wrapped rabbit, which turned out amazing. Highly recommend. It's so simple too. I mean, you just grab your meat, season with a bit of salt and pepper, wrap it up in bacon, and you're golden. So. There you have it folks, there's a recipe for how to cook one of the recipes that I use when I'm cooking my rabbit. Definitely going to be revisiting, uh, reusing this one eventually in the future for sure. Um, but I'm going to say goodbye to you guys while I eat the rest of this meal. And I uh, hope to see you next time as we try a different recipe with rabbit or possibly use some different game meat. In the meantime, take care.